Well, good morning again, guys. It is that time of the week. Um, as some of you maybe have recently um, came became friends of the Hickory Street uh, Facebook or maybe subscribed to this channel, um, possibly um, you don't know exactly what I do, but uh, this channel is basically it's it's not an entertainment channel. I'm not I'm not all that funny or anything like that. I'm not here to uh, do any kind of special tricks or skills that I have. Um, it's basically just a channel for our church and anyone else who's interested in um, basically spiritual growth. I mean, it, we're here to kind of grow together and uh, I don't have any all the answers to life or anything like that. I'm just a normal guy who's uh, desire is to kind of help um, my fellow Christian to, to grow and, and to go through things together. And so uh, one of the things we've been doing is walking through uh, these this book by O.S. Hawkins, and it's called the Joshua Code, and it is uh, uh, entitled underneath that Joshua Code is 52 scriptures that every Christian should know, and we're on week 12 of that, and so we've walked through several, 11 other scriptures that have been very insightful, and so today we want to look at another one, and it is 1 Corinthians 10:13. and it says, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to man, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able for with the temptation, he will also make a way of escape so that you may bear it or that you can bear it. It's interesting scripture. You know, a lot of times this scripture has been used uh, out of context to say, God's not going to put too much on me than more than I can handle. But it is talking about temptations. And uh, a long time ago, when I was a little boy, there was a phrase that went around, the devil made me do it. It was a comedian, I think his name was Red Skelton or something like that, that uh, was an older comedian that I never really watched, but heard him quoted. And uh, sometimes we do look at the temptations that come up on us as uh, things that the devil made us do. Um, but <clears throat> trials and temptations, though, are not the same thing, it seems to me, as I'm trying to learn this for my own self. And, you know, a trial may be something like what we're going through now with this coronavirus, you know, it's a trial. It's an adaptation to life. We've had to change some things. Um, the temptation, though, in that trial of this coronavirus situation could be we're tempted to get angry. We're tempted to become fearful. We're, we're tempted to become selfish. We're, we're tempted to, uh, um, and, you know, so, you know um, hoard things that and not allow anybody to have any that need and so there, there are some temptations that come inside of trials, but uh, we know that God is not the one tempting us. He may allow trials to come upon us. Even We know even at James, the book of James chapter 1 says that um, we're tempted when we're drawn away. Um, and enticed by our own desires uh, and, and, and those things that are outside of God's will. We're enticed by that. But we know, according to that same scripture, that God doesn't tempt us with evil, nor is he tempted with evil. But he might allow um, trials to come upon us. So when we do have temptations, though, it seems like what I'm learning, and uh, you, you try this out for yourself and see if this is correct. It seems like what I'm learning uh, from this scripture is that there is a reality of temptation. When you look at that first part, no temptation has overtaken you, that is, uh, except what is common to man or mankind. And so there's a reality that, first of all, the, the first reality in that is we're going to be tempted. We will be tempted. I mean, um, you know, I guess sometimes we have a tendency to think, man, the temptation's in my mind and I must be sinning. Well, you know, I don't think that's the case. I think that temptation is going to be there. It's a reality of life. Um, <clears throat> maybe you think as I get older, I get to become a stronger Christian, temptations won't be there as much. And in some cases, that might be right. We might grow past some things. But also take this in consideration. Uh, David, as he was in his older years, a uh, stronger Christian, supposedly, he was tempted with Bathsheba. You know, um, Moses was tempted later in, in his life uh, to, to um, you know, want to be angry at the people and, and let the people th think that it was him doing the, the, the miracles. Uh, Elijah was tempted later in his, his walk with God and he thought that no one else was following God, tempted to get down and discouraged. And so we might take in that 
uh, thought and say, okay, I need to be understanding that, yeah, temptations are going to be common in my life, and, and they may be with me my whole life, uh, and I may have to deal with them, and so I better make a plan. How am I going to deal with temptations? They're coming this week, they're this, this year, this month. They're coming to you. They're going to come to me, and so I need to understand how am I to get through this thing? How am I to deal with it uh, and, and not allow it to become something that I slip into and, and uh, uh, let it become um, a, a main focus of my life? Uh, in this book, this devotional book that O.S. Hawkins wrote, he used the analogy of a, uh, a hotel. Uh, I thought it was a pretty good analogy. Uh, he said, look, as the owner of the hotel, we cannot necessarily um, stop people from coming in the front door, but maybe we won't give them a room. And, you know, I understand the debate about that, but let's just use it as an analogy here that it, we can't stop things from coming before us. As we walk down the road, as, you know, things happen, circumstances, uh, coronavirus, we can't stop temptations from coming, but we can stop them from uh, becoming uh, an occupant in our life. Uh, we don't give them room in our life, but we know that they're a reality. And so uh, here's a reminder. We have the reality of temptation. Now we have a reminder for temptation. Let's look at this scripture. Um, the second part of that, but God is faithful. That's the reminder. The reality is it's going to be there. No temptation has overtaken us that is not common to man. Uh, so it's going to be there. We're going to have that common temptation. But there's also a reminder that God is faithful. He says, look, I'm always be with you. Uh, he says, there's no shadow. Uh, uh, he said, I'm the father of lights. And uh, there's no shadow of turning in him or any variation. Um, he says, every good and perfect gift comes down from above and from the Father of lights where there's no shadow of turning, no variation. You, you know, every one of us has stood underneath a, a street lamp at night or street light and, and noticed as we stood directly under it that there was not much of a shadow or any shadow if you stood perfectly under it. But as you moved away or you, you varied and you turned, uh, you, you could see the movement of the shadow. And, and so we get this idea that in sometimes when people give you their word, when people say something to you, it may change. You know, they may move, they may adapt, they, they may change to a different scenario and, and have a different set of rules. Um, and, you know, make up the rules as you go along kind of thing. But that's not the way it is with God. The reminder with God is he's always the same. His word that he planted into um, uh, people's, through people's minds, into what we have now as the Bible many, many years ago, it still remains the same. He says, if you're faithful and just to uh, come to him and confess your sins, he will cl cleanse you uh, of that. And he will uh, bring you into his family. He will uh, make a way of escape from temptation. He will promise to be there with us with the Holy Spirit. Many things that he's promised us. He's going to be faithful. When you're going through a temptation, remember, his word is faithful. And so not only do we have that reality of temptation, that it's a common temptation or a common thing that we're going to have temptations. We have the reminder of temptations or for temptations that God's faithful. And we have a remedy for temptation, which is the best part of this is that he will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we are able to uh, uh, handle. Um, but with every temptation, when he sees it, he's going to make a way of escape. When he knows we're being tempted, when he, matter of fact, he's already really made the way of escape, and it's through his word to know and knowing his word, and he's really already taught us everything we need to know in his word. And so, uh, there's always that point that we know that hey, this is my moment of escape. This is where I shouldn't uh, take this escape. But unfortunately. Most of us don't want to take that escape. I love to go to escape rooms. I, maybe some of you have been, and it's enjoyable to go in there and try to find a way out. You know, your goal is to get out in a certain time, an hour or 45 minutes or whatever it is. And so you want to get out and you find clues and you find locks and you find combinations and all these things that you work at getting out. Uh, unfortunately, in temptations, uh, the remedy is like there's an escape, but sometimes we're not uh, excited about looking for it. Matter of fact, we just kind of 
stop and just say, you know what, I kind of enjoy this. I think I'm going to allow it to have some room in my life. Um, but look, it's, it, temptation is not an uncommon thing that Jesus doesn't understand. It, Hebrews chapter 4, 15 says that Jesus was tempted. He was, and he was tempted on all points just as we are and did not sin. And so we know that he made it through. And so we also know there's a way that we can escape it. And we just have to look at it. We have to begin to look for it in the same way you would in an escape room. So this week, as you try to memorize this verse, pour it into your life, not only memorize it, but let it apply to your life and let it help you as you try to overcome or work through the temptations. I'm gonna to try to do that in my life because I know I definitely need it. And I think it should probably be a common thing that we all need. So God bless you this week as you look over 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to man. But God is faithful. He uh, will not allow this temptation. Uh, let, let me get it right. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond uh, what you are able. Uh, for with the temptation, he will also make a way of escape so that you may be able to bear it. God bless you. Have a great week.